Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make this. It's a simple wooden building to go on your model railway. Simply made using simple materials. It's a generic little garage or hut, so nothing special, but you can decorate yours how you wish and make it something unique. I made this for the Railway Inspector 3 in 2020, but reminded myself recently that I recorded the whole process to one day make a video just like this. This is one day. In terms of materials, everything I've used is mentioned in this video if you need more info. Firstly, you'll need two types of card. When I refer to thick card, I mean mount board, which is 1mm thick and usually used by artists, but you could probably also use plastic card. You can usually find it in craft stores in A1, A2, A3 or A4 sheets. When I refer to thin card, I mean more easily found greetings card kind of thickness, which you can get in stationery stores in multi-packs. You'll need glue. I used Wilco super glue for this, but any contact adhesive should work just fine. You'll need matchsticks, which can be bought in packs of all sizes, and coffee stirring sticks, which you can either find in coffee shops or purchase instead. You'll need some sort of clear plastic sheet, either from packaging or by laminating a clear plastic wallet. You'll need paint too, and I've used water-based acrylics in this, which can be found here, there and everywhere. I've also used corrugated card, but that's honestly up to you, it's more of a decoration thing. In terms of tools, you'll need a pencil, ruler, scissors, tweezers, a sharp craft blade, paint brushes and a box of tissues to cry into if it all goes horribly wrong. That's it, let's go! The first thing you'll need is motivation to scratch build a model building, because that's what we're doing today. My one was inspired by the warehouses used in tugs, which are wooden, rugged and easily repurposed. If you want to start easy, then I'd suggest starting with a simple four-walled building. I sketched a general 3D view of what I was going to make, then did some profile views of each side and a plan view to work out the dimensions. Unless you're creating a scale replica, the easiest way to scale is to have a template size of a person so you can work out the height of doors and windows. As an easy representation, I've used a 00 slash HO scaled figure here to measure everything up. It's not the most professional approach, but it works when you're starting out. Play around with the dimensions until you're happy, and you can cut out the pieces on paper first if you're unsure if it's too big or too small. Once you're happy, and you should be, life's great, translate your measurements onto the thick card, making sure that the edges are completely level. For now, we're only making the walls. The roof and the details will come later, if they feel like it. Label each part so there's no confusion or delay, and shade in any areas that need to be cut out, like the windows and doorways. Double check every measurement, and then cut out each piece with scissors or a craft blade. Then cut out the windows and doors with a craft blade. It's easier to do this whilst they're still flat, rather than when they're glued together as one. When you say you make models out of cardstock, people usually presume that this means they're brittle, but there's two secrets that I use to make mine extra strong. One is by using mount board, which is the flex tape of all card, and the other is by using tabs. Using thin card, cut small 2cm long rectangles and fold them to 90 degrees, using the edge of your desk. Try and make a bunch of these out of all of the offcuts and you'll save material better. These are going to brace the corners of each wall and just make your life so much easier. Using a thin spread of glue along the flat edge, stick two of the walls together, using the cutting mat and your fingers to make sure they both sit perfectly flat and are aligned. Glue one or two tabs into each corner and work your way around each wall. Be careful not to stick them too close to where you'll be fitting other parts such as the windows and the roof. Support the inside of the model by putting a piece of thick card across the centre or to whatever shape you wish the interior walls to be and stick these with tabs as well. For the windows, cut a square piece of thin card that's about 5mm bigger than your window space. Either map out the exact dimensions that you used on the sketches, or you can put it behind the wall and draw around the gap. These lines mark the biggest size that your windows can be. Make a smaller square within this by about 2 or 3mm, and then cut this out. Where you have windows of different sizes, make sure you label them to prevent more confusion and more delay. Cut these out with a craft blade, again. When making the window panes, you could make them out of 2mm strips of card, or you can use matchsticks to make the frame, or both. Use tweezers to fit them within each template that you've just made, making the outside frame first, and then going across the middle with either card or matchsticks to make a pattern. 
This is probably the most tedious and difficult step, so take your sweet time. Once you've achieved all of your dreams, try and fit the window pieces together into each gap on the wall and adjust them if they're needed. You can see that the thickness of the matchstick helps to protrude the frame from the wall, which is important because the wooden detailing is yet to be added. Paint the window pieces whichever colour you wish, I've gone for a dark green, and keep them to the side until you finish painting the rest of the building. Hopefully your name's Tyler because now we're onto the roof. Using thin card, you want a piece that's about 5mm over each edge, so that there's a little bit of overhang. If you're unsure, you can measure it directly off of the building. Fold the card in half and see how well it fits, but don't glue it until you've made the other roof components first, if you have any. For the garage, I'm again cutting a thick piece of card to the precise size of the square roof, and labelling it with arrows so that I know which way it's supposed to face. This sits nicely on two of the tabs that I fitted earlier. A technique that I personally like to do is to then glue a sheet of sandpaper on top. When painted, this gives a nice rough texture with little effort. With this small square garage roof section in place, the main triangular roof now sits slightly off, so I adjusted it with about a millimetre indent in this section, so they're both are tidy again. It's so lovely when roofs are friends. Making sure you have plenty of glue to do so, you don't want to run out, carefully stick the roof in place, and secure it again with as many tabs as your heart desires. Then, again with any offcuts, strengthen the roof on the inside. Congratulations, you have now got the shell of a building and from here it's the detailing that'll change how it looks. Using a cardboard box, newspaper or whatever else that's disposable, I went outside and spray painted the whole exterior with primer. I let this dry and then sprayed the interior. You can hand paint but spraying is quicker and it helps to make sure any hard to reach places are covered. Don't be impatient, let it dry. Back inside with the thin card, I cut 8mm strips using a paper trimmer to the length of the roof. Then, using scissors, I took each strip and cut it almost all of the way through, but not quite. These will be the roof tiles, so I did this about every 1cm to keep it a consistent size. It doesn't matter if you cut all the way through by mistake, it happens, but keeping each strip as one piece will help to keep it neat when you come to glue them down. It does mean they're more likely to curl up though, but you can carefully flatten them again with your hands. Once or twice, you may want to deliberately cut out a single tile, because this could be dressed to look like one has fallen loose. Depending how aged you want your roof to look, you can cut the corners of a few tiles to make them each uniquely jagged and less uniform. If the building is dry at this point, glue each strip down to the roof starting at the bottom, either as neat as you can or with a slight curve in the middle to show that the roof is sagging. Overlap each layer by 3 or 4 millimetres and work your way upwards. Here I'm using one of the accidentally cut tiles to make one that's broken off from the rest because it's a rebel like that. I then took the building back outside for the roof to be primed. I used matchsticks to frame the doorways and painted very simple card squares to act as the doors, but equally you can get plastic kits to make each door unique. Here at Terrier 55 Stepney HQ, we don't endorse drinking high volumes of caffeine, nor do we promote stealing, but you may have to do one of these things unless you can find a place that sells thin, wooden coffee stirrers. Either way, try and find a bunch that are just pure wood and don't have any wax coating on them, as those ones are difficult to cut and to paint and they just generally want you to be in pain. Cut them to the height of the walls, either square for the side walls or triangular for the roof sections. If you want an older building, then every so often you can glue a small piece to the bottom of the wall. Overlapping that, fix another piece to make the difference, so that it looks like the board has warped in the heat. This is another good use for offcuts, and you can try doing this at different lengths to give variety to otherwise flat walls. Make sure you leave enough room for the window panels to be fitted, and repeat this process until you question why you started it in the first place or until you've finished. With a blade, a screwdriver or sandpaper, you could chip away parts of the wood in places to make various dents and scratches. I could have sprayed the walls in primer, but because you're using genuine wood to make a wooden wall, 
it's quite nice to use the dry coffee sticks as they are, for texture. So mixing white, brown and burnt sienna paint to the colour I wanted, I painted the walls by hand, making sure that every gap was coated. I wanted grey blue roof tiles, so I mixed black and white first, then added a touch of blue. You may need more than one coat to make sure every bit is extra warm and nothing gets left out. Then it's on to weathering. There are countless ways you can do this, but a cheap way, that's me, is to brush on a drop of water to the area you're applying it. Then, with a darker colour to the paint of the wall, for instance I'm using a very dark grey here, brush on a small amount of paint. Following this, use your finger or a paper cloth to gently wipe it clean again. This should leave a subtle change of shade to the surface, but you can keep repeating this process until you're happy with the effect. Another method is to dry brush, which, as the name suggests, is getting paint on the brush, wiping it clean with a paper towel, then applying the remains onto the model. Do whatever works for you though, there's no real right way of doing this so long as you're happy with how it looks. However, having said that, you're wrong. A good model is one that has a unique personality and feels lived or worked in. Try and think about the parts of the building which would be dirtier than others. For instance, around the edges and corners of the walls, the windows and the doors where dirt could be kicked up, or from where water has dripped down from the roof. Add other colours too, like varying shades of wood colour or mud, or rust where you want to represent where the metal of the screws has deteriorated. With the garage door, I wanted to interchange between an open and closed sliding door. I did this with a small square of card that fits behind the entrance, with corrugated card on top. Blue tack holds the door in place, whilst the other one can be stuck to the inside of the roof until it is needed. To fit glass to the windows, I used transparent plastic found often in a lot of packaging. Don't buy plastic sheets readily available in craft stores because they will rip you off. Using tiny amounts of glue in each corner, these were fitted behind the window pieces, trying to prevent any glue spillage because this will show up on the glass when it dries. The windows were then stuck into place. And that is pretty much it. This is very much a blank canvas building, and you can detail it as you wish with signs or posters and decor, but that is how I made a very quick and simple wooden hut. I hope you found this useful, and if not, it's probably because everything I've shown you is what I've learnt myself over the years, and there's a chance that it makes sense to me, but nobody else. Either way, if you've enjoyed this, please let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll make more in the future, showing how I've made other models. If you make one yourself also, let me know as well, because I'd love to see what you've done with yours. For now though, goodbye. This was Tugs. Thank you to all of my brilliant patrons, Alex Goodman, GBH Train, Donald9 and Douglas10, D0280 Falcon, Sean Tempest, Kildanes Coven, Nat, Sam Bennett, Alco, and Henry Forrester.